We're lucky enough to be at Shepparton today at one of the most successful breeders, not only in Victoria, but all of Australia. You may not have heard of Carl McGrath, but you would certainly know of his father, Tony McGrath, and his Proven line, a line that's thrown many, many champions throughout the years, including Proven Alias, Proven Impala, and Proven Nitro. And who knows, this little one might just be the next champion. Carl, you're on 10 acres here. You only use about three acres for the dogs. Can you tell us a little bit about the setup here for how you rear the pups? Probably a very modest setup. We've uh, had this property for 40 years now. The runs are 40 year old. I mean, we've done the new fronts, etc., on them, but uh, the same shape and size they've been for the last, since 1975. The thing I find interesting is that you've got them reared on sand, whereas probably in an ideal situation, you'd have them on a but harder surface, but you obviously have the results on the sand. Why do you use that? It's about fixing up what you can't change. Without doing big over changes to our property, we use the sand as a way of um, softening the wrist injuries and these sort of injuries they get from pulling up hard. It's just making the most of what you've got available. Now, you've got two in each run. How do you pair them up? A uh, bitch and a dog, uh, same age, obviously, normally the same litter. We only put a couple, of, because of the size of runs and you don't want them bumping into each other, running down too much, and so we only have a couple. But in the ideal setup, when I had the large runs, I had um, four or five dogs running together. Right. And I, I actually preferred that system, but yep. it's just not feasible here. But what is your secret? I, I know you concentrate just on breeding. That's probably a big thing. I think too many people try and do a little bit of everything. You can't breed, rare and train. If you try and do it all, you're taking shortcuts somewhere. Um, I think we're as good as breeder as probably most people, but I certainly would be one of the worst trainers. <laughs> Your approach to breeding is probably considered quite unconventional. You're not lured to an expensive sire necessarily if a $500 sire has got all the attributes yep. that you would want. We, we don't uh, take the commercial side of it in at all when we pick a sire. Like I've gone to you know, your Where's Pedro's and your best sires around and that's, that's fine, I've done those and uh, had good results and bad results. What we do is we pick, basically the bitch tells us what size she's going to. She'll, we look at all her weaknesses or um, things nature-wise that she might need to improve on. We pick out the side that eradicates those or improves those areas and we come to a list of sides and out of those, if we get, if one doesn't stand out and there's a couple of equal ones, yeah, we'll pick the commercial one then out of those two, but we pick the one that suits the bitch. Basically what it is, is the base of our meal is bread mixed in with our meat and then we have meat meal, vitamins, liver mole, oils, calcium, so it gets mixed up in a cement mixer and um, yeah, it doesn't come out looking the best. It's not something I'd probably enjoy, but the dogs seem to love it. And um, yeah, everyone who's used it on their dogs has converted over to it now and loves it. So what's a manageable amount of um, litters that you can breed a year here? We average probably around six or eight litters a year we out of the property. And um, a lot of it just depends when the bitches come on to make sure they don't clash at the same time. And, I've got two new whelping kennels, uh, reverse cycle air conditioning there, plus I've got the heat lamps. Try and have it that nice 23, 24, whatever in the rooms there for them. And I see you've got a security camera up there in the corner above yeah. the whelping box. Does that mean you don't have to get out of bed <laughs> every couple of hours when a bitch is due to whelp? Yeah, we still get out of bed. We've only got to turn the TV on inside and um, great for the winter. Takes the pressure off the bitch, less stress on the bitch and less stress on us. It's not all copy booked what we do. Um, we actually don't give our bitches a lot of extra calcium shots or anything like that when they're having their pups and whelping down, etc. But we give them calcium. Our bitches and our pups get the same food right through right. the whole time. So our bitches are in good nick when they come on season. They're already you know, at their maximum. They, we find that they hold their condition beautiful when they're having pups. And, uh, it can be all, all, an all-nighter, can't it? You can be yeah, sitting there all right. night, so you've got to keep them happy. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> they normally always do it on a weekend or when you've got something on the next day. But uh, that's the joys of breeding. How many litters would you let them have? What's an ideal amount, do you think? We often say three is a good size, but we'll get, we've gone to seven. So if we think the pups may have dropped off in, in the last litter or something like that, we'll, we'll, we're quite happy to uh, pull up stumps and say that's enough for that bitch. And whether that's three litters, two litters, five litters, you know, we'll, we judge it on the bitch as we go along. Carl, out of all the success that you've had, is there one special moment? Uh, I think uh, last year winning the, or the year before winning the shootout with Proven Nitro, it was just the timing of it was right. It was a special time with Dad being sick. Um, we just brought this property off Dad and um, to come back, live, live back here again. Just with everything that had happened, it was just a perfect timing, that race, yeah. Very special one. <laughs>